this morning, as I share with you, oh, hallelujah, I want to share with you the difference between redemption and the kingdom of God or being born again. You, you're born again to get in the kingdom of God. <laughs> you're redeemed to get out of sin. Right. Praise God. And I, I, I like to say, I, I really believe I have the best thing in the world. The best message. Praise God. Others, uh, uh, they don't know this message. There's people who think they're born again and they're not. All, all that, of course. All the father that went is redemption. It's like Brother Kenneth Reeves said, uh, they come out of Egypt, uh, but they just uh, anchored, was ambled around in that desert for 40 years. They didn't go on in and take the kingdom for 40 years. And that's the way Brother Kenneth Reeves said a lot of people are today. They've experienced the redemption by the blood of Jesus, they 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 love Jesus. They've accepted Him, but uh, they're not born again. All of, all of all they come is redemption. Let's go to John chapter three. Uh, you know I've gone over this a little bit before, but I want to do it again. And maybe go a little slower and get you in. But praise God. In John chapter three. Start verse 1. There was a man, oh, I want you to, as I read this, and, and you read along with me, I want you to know something. See if you, in these first 13 verses, see if you can find the word salvation, or saved, or eternal life. See if you can find those words. Okay, let's read John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered. I like to say this. Nicodemus had a question. Jesus had an answer. Nicodemus had a question. Jesus had an answer. And he's the answer today. Hallelujah. He is the answer today. He's the answer for you. He's the answer for me. Now, where was I? You got to be born again now. To see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can this be? Uh, can you enter the second time in your mother's womb? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. As you know, that's the only time that you'll see plainly uh, these words. Unless one is born of water and of the Spirit. That's the keys. That's the keys that Peter got. You, you know, uh, Jesus, uh, in the 16th chapter of Matthew, he told Peter, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. I don't think Peter knew what he's talking about. The keys haven't been uh, used and, and until Pentecost. Well, let's go a little farther here. You got to bet unless one is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. See those two words, spirit? One's capital and the other is not. So it, here's what it means. He that's born of the spirit of the living God is spirit. It's your spirit that's born again. It's not your soul. Your soul is redeemed by the blood. But it's not born again. The soul didn't need to be born again. God made provision for the soul way back there in Genesis. He told Adam, you're going to die and go back to the dirt. Uh, but the Bible says, God shed the blood of animals and um, and uh, clothe them. 
with those bloody skin. So, uh, and then he told Moses in, in uh, Leviticus 17, blood, the blood makes atonement for the soul. So Adam's soul didn't die. His spirit was, the minute he ate that forbidden fruit, his spirit died to the things of God. It, it, he still had a spirit because uh, the Bible says in, in James, without the spirit, we're dead, you know. It's the spirit that moves his body. Uh, but, but as far as to the things of God, Adam's spirit was cut off from fellowship with God's spirit. That's what it means to be born again. We got something. Hallelujah. This means more to me than it ever did. Praise God. I'm telling you, this week I was studying about the name of God a little bit. And Deuteronomy 6 4. Can anybody quote that? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Amen. You know that took on new meaning to me this week? Just saying that? Because that word hear means understand. And obey. So God is saying, I want you people to know that there's none other God but one. And then I hear these people out there talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, the Trinity, the three of them. It's not in the Bible. God is one. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where was I here? <laughs> Don't marvel. Verse 7, I guess. Don't marvel, I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it uh, wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? There's another question he asked. Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak that we know and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man which is in heaven. <laughs> Praise God, all the presence right there. He was down here on the earth, but he said he's in heaven too, so that's all my presence. Now then, I'll ask that question again. In those 13 verses, did you see the word saved? Did you see the word salvation? Did you see the word eternal life? No, you didn't see that. You know why? Because that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the kingdom of God. Yes. He's, he's not talking about salvation. He's not talking about redemption. He's talking about being born again, getting in the kingdom of God, being a kingdom heir, sharing in his, the glory of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, well, let's go on down to verse, read this, and see what, you, what words you find. Verse 14, he found in the temple, wait a minute, that's, that's chapter 2. I'm on the wrong chapter. Verse uh, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Moses lifted up the serpent. Moses. And Jesus is saying, that's what I'm going to be lifted up. That whosoever believes him should not perish, but have now that's the word we're looking for in the 13 verses, but we didn't find it, did we? You know why? Because there's a difference between redemption and the kingdom of God. There's a difference between being redeemed. There's a lot of people that have experienced redeem, redemption. You know, and some some honest people have taught this. Ralph Reynolds and Kenneth Reeves taught there's a they taught. The, the children of Israel was redeemed out of Egypt, but they didn't go and take the, the promised land. They, they 
laying around in the wilderness for 40 years, which Jesus spent 40 days after he raised from the dead, talking to them about the kingdom of God. Now, I've got new thoughts on that. If he spent 40 days talking to them about the kingdom of God, then I think they would have some idea of what the kingdom of God was. I think old Peter knew that when he got the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, that he had those keys that Jesus had promised to him in Matthew 16. Hallelujah. You, you see that? You believe that? Amen. Praise God. You see, most going to be lifted up. Some man's going to be lifted up. That whoso believes him should not perish to have eternal life. You can find that word eternal life back there in the first part of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoso believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be what? Saved. Praise God. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he hasn't believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Praise God. John 5, 43, Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. Hallelujah. I come in my Father's name. Praise God. And that's why I'm in my Father's name today. Praise God. And, and you know, I want to point this out again. What he's talking about here in the first 13 verses is the kingdom of God. You get into that by the water and spirit. What baptism in the name of Jesus and the baptism of the Holy Ghost speak in tongues? That's what I believe the water and the spirit is. Now, there's some honest people. I met, I met them and talked to them. They don't even, they believe salvation is all in the water and the spirit. That's not right. The blood has a function. And I say this, you've heard me say it. The blood is an exit. It brings you out of something. That exit, you see, gets you out. The blood's an exit. But the water and the spirit is an entrance. Not to the same old thing. Because when he exits you out of sin, he do not expect you to go back there. He expects you to keep following him all the way to the kingdom. <laughs> Woo. Praise God. I've got the best thing in the world. Best message in the world. Praise God. Praise God. You know one thing that the Lord showed me that occurred to me? These first 13 verses, he's talking about the kingdom of God and how it's going to come and what's going to be, you know, the water and spirit. So when did that happen? When did that really happen? Acts 2, 1, I think. When that day was fully come. What day? The day of Pentecost. This here in these 13 verses, he's talking about the kingdom of God. He's talking about Pentecost. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues. Pentecost. Praise God. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. So he's talking about Pentecost. But the, the other verses I read from 14 down to 18, he's not talking about Pentecost. He's talking about Passover. He's talking about shedding his blood, his life, that you can be saved. That's the purpose of redemption, to save your soul. But after that, after the, he saved your soul, shed his blood, you by faith accepted his blood, and so you had re redemption. Now you can go on to the kingdom of God and be baptized in Jesus' name and baptized with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Who, who teaches that except us? Huh? Oh, Lord. <laughs> You're lucky. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. 
Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. You know, I believe Jesus said, I suppose, and he spoke the words of his Father. I was reading in John 14, John 17 this morning. He said, he said I speak what my Father says. And he said, you know what? John 8, 58, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. That's what he told Moses. When, when, when he sent Moses to get the children of Israel out of Egypt, and Moses said, well, who am I going to tell us? Send me down here. And Jesus said, I am. Tell them I am sent you. And here he is, all these years later, talking to these Jews, these children of Israel, and he told them, before Abraham was, I am. You know what I believe? That wasn't the son talking. The son talked, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. That's his, that's the flesh. That's his human soul, his human body. But it's not his spirit. And so, uh, what, what got blessed on the day of Pentecost was the human spirit. That's why he didn't fulfill that scripture. But he's telling them, Nicodemus, that which is born of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, is going to be your spirit. Praise God. So that's why I like to say, I've been redeemed. Praise God, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. My faith in his blood makes me righteous. That's Romans uh, chapter 5, chapter 9. Uh, the Bible says, Abraham believed God. His faith, God said, that makes you righteous, buddy. So, <laughs> Hallelujah, I've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus, but that's not how I got born again. After that happened. See, you got to experience redemption before you can be born again. <laughs> God don't put sinful people in his kingdom. He puts the redeemed in his kingdom by giving them the Holy Ghost. This means more to me than it ever did. Praise God. I thought maybe as I went over this, uh, y'all would interact with me. If anybody got anything you want to say about this or question me, do you understand what I'm trying to teach you? The difference between redemption and being born again or being in the kingdom of God is like, like uh, Ralph Reynolds and Jeff Lee said. Uh, People get redeemed by the blood, and they think they're born again, but they're not. They're just wandering around in the wilderness. Praise God, they're not lost. You, you know, in Luke 10, 19 and 20, Jesus had sent his disciples, his apostles out to preach the gospel, and they come back, and they told Jesus, even devils are subject to us through the use of your name. Yeah, even devils are subject to us. And you know what he told him? He said, that's okay. No, but don't rejoice because the devils are subject to you. Rejoice because your name is in heaven. Yes. Your name is. That's before they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's like what I will really say. That's before they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They were, had redemption. They had salvation. Their name was written in heaven. But it wasn't until the day of Pentecost that they got the Holy Ghost and was ushered into a kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I believe that Praise God. when Jesus said that before Abraham was, I am, I believe that was the Father. That eternal spirit Amen. speaking. Amen. When he said, I'm thirsty or I'm sleepy, that was his flesh yes. speaking. That's the son speaking. Yes. yes. So when he said, Before he ran, was I am. That's not the son. <laughs> Ooh, that's God Almighty. Yes. Hallelujah. And God wants you to know Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. Pay attention. Listen up. The Lord our God is one. Yes. Hallelujah. 
We have the greatest message in the world. Praise God. I wish everybody would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody got a remark you want to make? Praise Any, the Lord. Something about this is getting your... Is it? <laughs> hey, I see you're about to Well, blow, blow I'm up. making notes. I said the cross represents an altar of sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Die out God. to self. And then we are buried with him. Hallelujah. Die out, we're buried with him in baptism, raised to new life. This happens as the cross, <laughs> the burial, and the resurrection. There you have the gospel. Amen. We follow after Jesus in like pattern. Amen. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. I, I just don't believe there's very many people out there. See, I, I know something about John 3 that I didn't used to know. I, I mean, in the last year, I didn't know until the Lord just pointed it out to me that in, when he's talking about the kingdom of God, he's not talking about eternal life. He's talking about what you get into. Your spirit's getting born again, and you can and, and you can walk like a Christian, do the things a Christian does. But when he gets down to verse fourteen, he starts talking about what 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 he's going to do that you can live forever. Talk about your redemption, your salvation. In those first 13 verses, he's talking about what happens to you after you redeem, after you he saved you. Praise God. Like I said, I met one of people. I talked to them. Oh, that's all water and spirit. It's all water and spirit, you know. You don't have water and spirit. And, and, and so, like my son, where he went to church uh, that one time anyway, they taught him the bloods in the water. Some teach that. That's the way you receive the blood of Jesus in the water of baptism. That cannot be right. Because the blood is an exit, I say again. It gets you out of something. When you put the blood in the water, you're making it part of the born again experience. It's not, it's redemption. The born again experience is water and spirit. Praise God. Anybody have anything you want to add? Anything you want to say, I'm into it. I love this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Clifford, you got anything you want to say? Nothing? What do you think about this? Ain't this good? Huh? Ooh, hallelujah. It ain't anything any better. <laughs> one of these days, I'm already a kingdom heir. And one of these days, I'm going to have to really throw this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise God. So he, said, he Jesus spent 40 days talking to him about the kingdom of God. Tell him about the kingdom of God. 40 days and they knew something about the kingdom of God when he went up. And Peter said he went up and took the throne of David that's up there in the sky. Hallelujah. And in Matthew 16, the last part of that chapter, it says, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you gain if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? And then he said, one of these days I'm going to come in the glory of my Father with the holy angels and I'm going to judge the world. That prophecy has not been fulfilled. He has not come in the glory of his Father. He has not come with the holy angels. He has not judged people. But the next verse he says, you guys ain't going to die till you see me come into my kingdom. That prophecy has been fulfilled. When? When they saw him go up and take the throne in heaven and pour out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And now I'm a kingdom heir. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Anybody around here a kingdom heir? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I guess I'm going to quit unless you got something you want to add or want to testify? Want to tell when Jesus saved you? Well, we're supposed to tell it, declare it, say it, sing it. <laughs> that's what I, I think that's Isaiah 46. I said, tell it, Minus 48. Tell it, tell the world. 
That's what Jesus said. Go and blood all the world and preach the gospel. Go and all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them what Jesus did. Tell them about Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, it's the power of God. Yeah. Praise God. It's the power of God. It's the salvation of those that believe. Yes. For those that don't believe, they're going to wish they did. Well, praise God. So, anybody want to testify? Well, tell like it was. Tell like it was. Yeah, see, I'm going to testify. My first experience with God, I like to talk about it. I, I was 11 years old. My folks had sold out on the farm, moved to town. We was going to a little old basement church. And I've been to church before. We weren't real faithful to church. Uh, but I, but we were, did go part of the time. So I heard about Jesus. And, but uh, it didn't mean anything to me until one night that old preacher or whoever he was quit preaching, gave an invitation to come to the front and accept Jesus. And I started crying. I didn't know what in the world that was happening to me. Father, I got up and went forward and God changed my life. And he's still changing it. Praise the Lord. Praise I, I, mean, I remember that I thought I was born again. I felt so good. Until the Lord showed me, she said, no, you just redeemed. You just redeemed. <laughs> you just you, 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 you got the kingdom when you got the Holy Ghost. You got that. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad I'm called by his name. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, I read it this morning. I thought, what was it? The 11th chapter, or maybe it's the 15th chapter of Acts. God sent Peter to the Gentiles. What for? To get a people for his name. Yes. In the 17th chapter of John, I read this one. Three times Jesus says, Father, I've manifested your name to the men that you gave me. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise Anybody want to testify now? Praise Anybody? Praise well, let's stand and just worship the Lord and be in this yes. place, huh? Hallelujah. I love this. Hallelujah. Father. Lord, I worship Amen. you. Because you're a man and you are God. Hallelujah. You are a man and you are God. Hallelujah. So I worship you, Lord. There is nobody like you. Praise God. When you split those eastern skies, oh, what is going to be then? What is going to be then? God impress it upon us. Impress it upon us, Lord. What a thing we have. What a thing we have. Hallelujah. 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 Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's what the Bible says. Psalm 96. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, your name is wonderful. Whatever we ask in your name, we did it. Praise God. We have to get in your name to ask in your name. Oh, God, what a thing, what a thing. Go with us now, Lord, as we conclude the service. Draw us close to you. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. What do you think, Eddie? What are you looking there? What are you I like